Today we will look at Victorian hairstyles circa 1874. Account for the very large hairstyles featuring rolls, twists, large plaits and ringlets. Note the black velvet chokers and lockets that were hugely popular. Unlike commonly believed, not all hairstyles of the era had centre partings. See the use of flowers, velvet ribbons and pearls in the hair. Some of these hairstyles may look crazily large, but were very much in keeping with fashion plates of the time. Hair was often piled high with numerous rolls, twists and enormous plaits. Think they're too big? Notice their similarity to the super high hairstyles in these fashion plates. Some of them almost reminiscent of the 18th century. The following pictures are from my original copy of Harper's Bazaar from 1874. In the next pictures we will see ladies with various hairstyles at evening soirees and balls from 1874. As you can see, some hairstyles were more modest affairs than others. See the strings of pearls in the hair? All those voluminous hairstyles required a lot of hair, far more than most women naturally had. This led to the widespread use of hair pieces amongst the upper classes. Faux hair could sometimes be made with horsehair etc, but was mostly human. Look at the variety of head of hair pieces. They were designed to be easily inserted into the hair via combs and pins. This is a hairpiece that I made in the Victorian style, in faux hair of course. Next I will show you how to create a quick early 1870s hairstyle using this. First, you'll need to give your hair a really good brush. Make sure you get out any tangles, especially if you have long hair like mine. It can be hard to separate the pieces. I'm using a natural bristle brush, which is commonly used also in the Victorian era and is very good for the hair. Next you're going to need to take a section of hair from your crown, separate it at the sides and take it towards the back, just a small section of hair from the crown at the back. Try to keep the lines nice and smooth at the side. And give it a good brush just to make sure it's smooth. Take this section forward and then you're going to need to take one of these little hair combs with like a hair pat, pad or rat on it. <laughs> Insert it in the hair as far forward as possible. It might take a little bit of adjustment to get it where you want it. Next, take a little bit more hair from the sides and a little bit more from the crown underneath at the back. This will ensure that the hair piece is kept in place and can't slip out. Again, try to make sure that your sections are nice and neat. Then take a hairband and tie that in place. Next we're going to take that piece of hair and we're going to use one of these special clips which are covered in faux hair. When you click them they curl up tight and wrap your hair in a coil. We're going to take that section of hair and bring it forward. We're going to place it between the two sections of the clip at the end. And then we're going to roll that section of hair towards her face until we reach the roots. You may 
find that when you reach your roots, it might need a little bit of adjustment. If it's too tight or too loose, you might want to just loosen it off a little bit and then re-roll it until you get it where you want it. And then we're going to clip that back in place so that it curls underneath like so. how it should look. Smooth the hair out over the edges of it and then we're going to take the next section of hair and again we need to brush this hair up as high as possible next to the coil that we've just made. It's quite difficult when you've got really long hair. You end up losing bits and it's hard to reach the ends. Ideally, this hairstyle is more suited to slightly shorter hair, but I'm just about managing. So take that section and then you're going to need to uh, tie that piece back to with a hairband. I am cheating a little bit here because obviously in the Victorian era they didn't necessarily have elastic hairbands. Um, they probably would have used clips or pins or some other way of pinning it back. It should look like that. And you're going to take another one of those hair clips and we're going to repeat the same process again. You want to keep each of these coils as close to each other as possible. It doesn't matter if there's a small gap in between but they do need to be nice and neatly spaced. Again, roll it up nice and tight and make sure that it turns underneath and this is how it should look. Now these little loose ends on the sides, we can take some pins and just pin them down and make the edges nice and neat and secure. And I'm just gonna take another one and pin that other one in there on the other side as well. one below is fairly tight so I'll be leaving that one as it is and I'm just showing you quickly here but obviously when you're doing it yourself you can take more time to make sure you get it just how you want it. There you go. So now <laughs> for the hair piece that I made <laughs> and as you can see it's very big definitely in keeping with these big hairstyles. Um, and it consists of a long plait with ringlets at the end. So I'm going to take this piece and place the ringlets right at the bottom underneath the second roll. And we're going to pin it in place just there. As you can see, we'll use the plait in a moment. So take a few hairpins and just secure that in place. Takes a little while here, so, but there you go. Next, we're going to take the long plait, and that is going to wrap around the two rolls that we've just made. It seems to want to go this side better. So bring it up over the top and along the sides, and then we're going to just take that end and tuck it neatly underneath some of the curls that we have at the back to hide the end. And once again, going to pin it in place there. Nearly done. We'll also take a couple of little pins and just secure it on the sides as well. Just slide one in on this side and one in on the other side. The top at the front is actually held in place very nicely by the rolls of hair but you can actually put another pin in if you want to make sure it's extra secure. We don't want this to come loose when we're dancing. And there you go and that's how it should look from the back. As you can see there is a little bit of space where we could perhaps put some flowers or something and decorate and if you have any pins showing, it's a good time to cover the pins up with some 
pretty floral decorations. I have these ones which I made a few years ago. I'm just going to find a good suitable place to put them on the side, I think. off now with some jewellery. I have these vintage earrings which are perfect for the Victorian look. There we are. And now for the choker <laughs> with the super long ribbons at the back. Looks crazy but wait until you see it. This is an original Victorian lock locket, roughly from around about the 1870s, possibly 1880s. And these lockets were very often tied with long black velvet bows with ribbon trailers that flowed over the back of their dress. Some of you might remember seeing it in uh, the painting by Tissot too early with the lovely frothy pink fluffy gown. I think it was possibly more of a French thing but but who knows um, it was sometimes seen that way. I just think it finishes off the outfit perfectly. So there you are that's the finished look. I hope you enjoyed that little hair tutorial and that it will be helpful to you in creating your own 1870s hairstyles. Here are a few pictures of the hair from behind. Shortly I will have a video coming up featuring my 1874 cream ball gown ensemble. Thanks for watching. Please check out my upcoming Get Ready With Me dressing video for the full look and follow me on Instagram, Beauty and the Bustle.